When the student uses the Picture Explorer objects to compare the color values for corresponding pixels in the top image and the bottom image, it should be obvious that all of the blue color values in the bottom image have been set to zero. Deducing that the red and green colors in the output pixels are the inverse of the red and green colors in the input image isn't quite as straightforward. However, as I mentioned earlier, Barb Erickson explains the inversion algorithm in her textbook and that should be a clue to the student in deducing this algorithm. Throughout this series of online lectures, I will break each program down and explain it in fragments. The first fragment that I will discuss in this lecture is the driver class, which is now shown in its entirety on the right hand side of your screen. There is nothing new in this driver class that you didn't already learn about in the previous lecture. Basically this driver class instantiates a new object of the class name prob02runner. Then it calls the run method on that object. When the run method returns, the driver class calls an accessor method named getPicture on the object, uh, passing the return value from that call to the print line method for display on the command line screen. The code that you now see on the right hand side of your screen is the beginning of the class name prob02runner. You should also be familiar with everything in listing 2. I will simply highlight the instantiation of a new picture object using an image file and the saving of that object's reference in a reference variable of type picture named PIC. You learned quite a bit about picture objects in the previous lecture. Going back to the driver class in listing one, we see that the run method is called on the object of type prob02runner. The code for the run method begins in listing 3 on the right side of your screen. As you learned in the previous lesson, the call to the add message method in listing 3 causes my name to appear in the upper left hand corner of the image that I am pointing to now. The last line of code in listing 3 calls the explore method on the picture object. This is a method that we have not previously discussed. A very brief description of this method appears here where Erickson's documentation says that this is a method to open a picture explorer on a copy of this simple picture object. The explore method is defined in the simple picture class which is a superclass of the class named picture. Therefore the explore method is inherited into the picture object that was instantiated 
in this program. The result of calling the Explorer method in listing 3 is to create and to display the picture explorer object shown in figure 1 on the bottom right hand side of your screen. The Picture Explorer class in Ericsson's library is a provides a very important capability. For example, if you call the Explorer method on a picture object and produce the Picture Explorer object that you see on the bottom right on your screen, it can be used to determine the color values for any pixel anywhere in the image. For example, if you point to a location in the image and click on that point with the mouse, the coordinate values for that image show up here and here, and the red, green, and blue color values show up here here and here. A color swatch showing the color for that pixel also shows up here. It's also possible to adjust the values by typing to adjust the location of the cursor by typing in coordinate values here and here as an alternative to clicking the image with the mouse. You can also use these arrow buttons there and there and there and there to cause the coordinate values to advance or move backward. That makes it very easy to track the color values along a horizontal line or along a vertical line. Finally, if you click the zoom menu, if you open the zoom, me zoom menu that I'm pointing to now, that pulls down a menu that allows you to cause the image area immediately surrounding the cursor to either be expanded or reduced. So that is one of the important capabilities provided by the Picture Explorer class. Another important capability, capability is that the Explorer method, which creates an object of the Picture Explorer class, makes it easy to display copies of an image at various stages during the processing of the image. When the Explorer method is called on a reference to a picture object, it begins by making a copy of that picture object and then it displays that copy in the image in the picture Explorer object. Subsequent changes to the picture object itself do not cause the image displayed in the picture explorer object to change. Therefore, you can use the explore method at various stages during the uh, processing of an image to create and save uh, copies of the image at those stages for comparison purposes. Now I'm going to demonstrate the use of a picture explorer, explorer object in comparing two images. The image that you see on the top left, I'm going to pause this for just a moment and make a minor adjustment in position. I've decided it will work better for me to display these two picture explorer objects side by side instead of one above the other. They fit the screen 
better that way. The first thing that I'm going to do is to use the mouse and click in the area of the penguin's beak on the left hand image. Now I will use the mouse to pull down the zoom menu and select 500 percent. As you can see the area of the image in the proximity of the penguin's beak has been uh, increased in size by a factor of five. If you look very carefully you may be able to see the little cursor that I'm pointing to right here that is the point that I clicked before I pull down the zoom menu. Now I'm going to attempt to do the same thing to the penguin on the right hand side. First I'm going to click on the penguin's beak, pull down the zoom menu, and select 500%. you can probably see that I didn't hit exactly the same value in both images. Looking at the coordinate values I did cause the X coordinate to be 251 pixels in both images but the Y coordinate is 175 pixels in the left image and is 173 pixels in the right image. Now I'm going to use the arrow on the Y coordinate for the left image. I'm going to click it twice to move the cursor up two pixels on the left image. Now I have the pixel in the same location on the penguin's head in both images. I'm now pointing to the red value or the value of the red the red color value for the current pixel on the left image. As you can see it is a value of 240. On the other hand the red color value for that pixel in the right image is 15. If we select if we subtract the red color value on the left from 255 that leaves us with a value of 15 which is the inverted color value for the image on the right. Similarly if I subtract the green color value on the left from 255 that leaves us with a green color value of 22 which is the inverted value the, the inverted green value for the pixel on the image on the left sorry the image on the right Finally, if you examine the color, the blue color value on the right, you'll see that it's zero, which matches what I told you earlier. This algorithm sets the blue color value to zero for every pixel. Therefore, it is not a pure inversion of the image on the left to get to the image on the right.